Shui, how many people in your house? Ten. Ten. And how many bedrooms? Three. Ten people in a house isn't too bad around here. There's Joy's mum and dad, Joy's five siblings, Joy herself, and her two kids. And what's it like in your house? How many bathrooms have you got for ten people? One. And where do your children sleep? In the lounge, on the bed, on the ground. On the ground, and in winter it's cold inside with damp and condensation, and inevitably Joy's kids get sick. What sort of sickness do they get? Chest, asthma, um, rashes, breathing problems, yeah. It's common around here, that stuff, isn't it? Yes. Joy dreams of having her own space, an insulated bedroom for her children, somewhere warm and dry, a rental of her own. And are you on a waiting list to get your own place so you don't have to live in a group of ten in a three-bedroom house? Yes, yes. And how long have you been on the waiting list for? For about two years. That first house we went to where there were 17 of them in there, so there was a tent out the front? Yeah. Then what? There was a tent at the front with four or five beds. Um, there's 17 people in, uh, in total living in this house, but they also had uh, people living in the garage out the back and they had a caravan parked there. And the mother um, said that some of, her, some of her kids also sleep on the hallway. I'm with Jenny Salisa, the MP for Manukau East. She took me to that house with 17 people in it. They were too shy and ashamed to speak. But I saw the tent and the garage and the bedding on the floor. Three generations of an extended family, 20 minutes down the motorway from central Auckland. It's a three bedroom house with only one bathroom. 17 people sharing that. It's overcrowding and you heard the mother saying that a lot of her kids are sick. Many come with a positive strep throat. Um, they have bronchiolitis. You know, with overcrowding, you have those sorts of issues. And so there are other costs to our society with overcrowding. Who's this person, Venus? This is my daughter, Faith. Hi, Faith. How are you? We met Venus and little Faith as we walked about. How many in your house, Venus? 13. 13, 12. How many bedrooms? Three. How many bathrooms? One. Faith gets sick all the time. Yeah. Oh, I can hear that now. You're chesty now, aren't you, little girl? Yes, you are. <laughs> wow. So what's it like in your house? How crowded is it? It's crowded, eh? Yeah, it's crowded. Very crowded. There's, like, so many people. Everywhere you go, there's somebody. <laughs> so, yeah, it's crowded. And dusty. And furry. And cold. Does it get damp? Yeah, Does it get mouldy? It's really cold, yeah. Like where the windows and then all the wetness. Condensation? Yeah. I'm standing in front of some state houses. And if you can't see them, if you're listening on the radio, they really are way past their best. There looks to be a lot of damp, a lot of rot. They really are in very poor condition. But there is a waiting list for these. If you can't get up the waiting list, if you can't get into a state house, you can go private. Now this is one of the poorest areas in Auckland. This is a neighbourhood where money is really tight, but beside the state houses, there is a property for rent. It's four bedrooms, and they've done a little bit of work on it, a lick of paint. It looks like a house the owners might be proud of. But the rent for this, well, I inquired, and you can get it for $580 a week. $580 a week to live here. Now. If you work a 40 hour week at $16 an hour, which is more than the minimum wage, that's 640 gross. And this place is 580. What needs to happen? We need to have more houses. Jenny Solisa says it's a crisis now, beyond the understanding of most New Zealanders. State houses are full, private properties are so expensive they're out of reach, homes are crowded beyond what's healthy. There is a desperation here now. Where are those families going to go? Where are they going to live? Jenny, do you think people who don't know these communities, who don't know Otara, who don't know Mangari, who don't know this part of Auckland, understand how bad the situation is here? I don't think they fully comprehend just how bad it is. When you see people renting out their garages at $380 a week, a garage that is not converted, a garage that is you know, supposed to be for a car, not for humans to live in, and when you see so many of our children come through and they're sick with all sorts of respiratory illnesses, John, 
this is New Zealand. This is Aotearoa, New Zealand, a first world country. And yet I see this many families who don't have a place to live, who are living in their cars, working families living in their cars in New Zealand.